Today, we are going to get started on a all new adventure. We are going to be making a no blank page journal. So what is a no blank page journal? Well, it's a journal that has no blank pages. All of the pages have something on them. They're not blank. For this journal, I'm going to be using this really wonderful um, kids watercolor paper. It's 90 pounds. And it's very comparable to the mixed media paper that you can get, which is either 90 pounds or 96 pounds. It's not as heavy as watercolor paper, which is generally 140 pounds, which you could use. That's fine, you know, if that's what you've got. For binding the journal, you're going to want some sort of heavy thread. I'm just using a heavy thread. Yeah, you, know, you could really use um, yarn, anything that you've got. Some scissors to, you know, cut the thread. Some needles to thread the thread through <laughs> thread the thread <laughs> through the holes that you're going to make with something that will well make make a hole. And we need that to make to bind the journal. Since these are painted pages, we obviously need some paint, right? And for this, I'm going to turn to my trusty craft paints. The reason I use these paints is because they are matte finish. And matte finish journal pages do not get sticky. Now, if you are new to art journaling, trust me, you do not want sticky pages. Sticky pages really suck. Now, with that said, inexpensive craft paints generally do not say matte on them, okay? But if they don't say gloss and they don't say satin, then it's going to be matte. So you just want the plain Jane matte finish craft paints. Now, I want to distinguish these from the liquid. The liquid ones come in these smaller bottles. You don't want these either. But you definitely don't want tube paints like this. This is going to get really super sticky on you. And we don't want any of that. But if all you have is tube paints or these liquid acrylics, stay tuned because at the end of this video, I am going to show you how to reduce the stickiness of your pages. We are going to be applying paints in several different ways. Uh, my favorite way to just get down some paint on a page really fast is to use a cart, and that's just scraping the paint on. You can also get, you know, these little tools where they will scrape it on in little patterns or scrape it off in patterns. So these can be come in really handy. I'm also going to be using a variety of stencils. Now, these stencils are unique in the respect that they just leave patterns, okay? You don't want something that's going to be specific, like, like birds or, you know, houses or anything that's going to, you know, be identifiable. You just want, you know, pattern. These ones I actually cut myself on my Cricut machine, but you can find loads of stencils um, at your local craft store. Just look for the ones that have, you know, some sort of pattern on them. And for applying the paint, my favorite tool is to use cosmetic sponges. And if you don't have cosmetic sponges, you might be able, you, you could probably get by with like a kitchen sponge. It's just a you know, a soft sponge that isn't doesn't have um, a lot of holes in it, like you know, the like these sea sponges have all, all these holes in it. Um, which, by the way, this is another great way to put down paint to get texture is using these sea sponges. These are wonderful. So another thing that I love to put down texture on pages is um, what I call texture tools, and this can be bubble wrap. This can be um, corrugated cardboard. I think this is like some sort of sewing cross stitch thing that you can get. And these are just like, I don't know. I don't even know where I got these things, but they just lay down texture. And my favorite way to get the paint on these is to use a brayer. And I generally have some sort of palette. This is just an old plate. And I put the paint on there and go like that. But, you know, you could use your sponges, you could use a brush, work with what you've got. 
All right. So, and of course, you know, paint brushes, paint brushes are great. You know, you can, you can cover a whole page with them. You can, you know, make little marks, paint brushes in a variety of sizes are really wonderful to have. And of course, a cup of water. And well, as you can see, my water's empty. Oops. <laughs> Maybe I won't be using paint brushes today. <laughs> Another thing, and this is, of course, completely optional, is um, stamps. But again, just like with the stencils, non-specific. Okay, you want stencils or stencils. You want stamps that are going to leave some sort of texture on your page. And I just have a, a little variety here that I picked out. And of course, some, some ink pads to get your stamps down. We are going to just get started making some, some background papers. And I'm just going to get out three pages. I'm just going to start off grab some paint, put some down. This is just kind of a, an example of how it might come out. Basically, we're just looking to create textured backgrounds on the pages. We're not painting pictures. We're not painting anything that's identifiable. These are all just textures. And I'm going to be using a variety of tools at my disposal to create these textures. Now, I want you to work with what you have. The last thing I want is for you to run out and buy a bunch of stuff that you don't need. Now, that being said, if you're new to art journaling and you don't have any supplies, you'll probably want to get some. For this first one, since it's going to be the same on both sides, I can just do like pink on this one, right? This one can be my middle spread because this is going to be a lot harder to duplicate. So I could do this one for my middle. And then I have to, so on this one, I just need to do the blue. So, okay, so now I have a plan. So now I know I've got to do um, something. I don't necessarily need to do it exactly the same, which would be like impossible, but I at least want to get the same like colors going, maybe the same textures going. I don't think that's going to be that difficult. So we are going to do the the cover. So we did our we did our pages, and we made them match. 
Okay, so when it gets folded, that our page spreads look really nice, right? And now we're going to do the cover. And I've been thinking about this a little bit. And I could do, this is going to be the, the, the back cover, back cover, front cover. Now, I could just do this whole page, just like we've been doing the, the inside, right? But I think I'm going to take this and fold it in half. and do the front and the back separately. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna fold all of these pages in half. Put it back together here, make sure everything is the way that I want it to go. Yep, looks good. Now I am going to take a tool to poke some holes. And I'm gonna poke three holes. I'm not going to worry about measuring them because it doesn't matter. You can just eyeball this, but I'm going to go in probably, probably about an inch from the edge. And then I'm going to put a hole about in the middle and then another hole an inch from the top edge. Like these little binder clips come in really handy for doing any sort of book binding. And I'm going to take some thread. Any thread will work. And what you want to do is you want to do two lengths, the height of your journal, plus a little extra needle. I'm going to start on the outside and I'm going to go through the center. And then I'm going to, either one, doesn't matter, top or bottom, go back out to the outside, all the way up to the other hole, and then back through the middle. And on this, I'm going to make sure that my thread comes out on both sides of the one that is in the middle. So that way, when I tie my knot, it ties that down. I've got a little something extra that I want to do with you today in our journals. And it's going to involve punching some holes and weaving in some thread. This is a screw punch, okay? Basically, when you push it down, this end turns, so it screws, okay? And it is going to like drill holes in my paper, but I don't want it drilling holes in my desktop. So I put one of these uh, cutting mats down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create holes all the way around the edge of my journal. And where you punch your holes, um, you know, somewhere near the edge is always good. Not too close to the edge, though. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna finish this up 
and uh, hopefully get my yarn to go all the way around. But I mean, isn't that, you know, you can just, this is just going to be such a fun journal to, to play in. As promised, I wanted to give you a little tip. If you're using paint tubes or paints that are sticky, anything that causes your pages to get sticky in your art journal, there are two things that I have found that work really well. Now, they're, they're not necessarily foolproof. If your pages are super sticky, you know, this is just going to reduce them, you know. But if it's just a little sticky, you can pretty much get rid of all the stick. And one of them is, and it doesn't have to be this brand, but you want some sort of clear spray that is matte. Okay, this I find works really well. Another thing is to use a matte medium. And not gel medium. Gel medium is, is just too thick. You don't want the matte medium is like a thinned down version. So if you have gel medium, maybe thin it down with some water. You can try that. Um, and I do recommend getting a professional brand like this. I have some inexpensive ones that I picked up and they leave like this film on top. So they're not truly clear. This will leave you with a nice, clear matte finish monday through friday one hour each day and we are going to do a intuitive collage each day with some sort of meaningful topic so we can dig into our own inner guidance and make some of those shifts that we've been wanting to make in our lives. So I really, really, really hope you will join me for that. And have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>